So the awards uh, have been around not as long, uh, most of them, as I guess I think sometimes when you think about the Rookie of the Year and the MVP and, and all that. I, I, you can't go back like some of the great players of all time never got those things because right. well, <laughs> well, it wasn't around. Things like the Silver Slugger didn't exist until like the mid-90s. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. So today we're going to pick, though, um, the oh, M- no, wait, 1980. 1980. Actually, you're uh, wow. I'm surprised that he was it was that early. So that means like guys like Sandberg and stuff were one silver slugger. So right. I don't think and I Gold Glove started in '57, and then the MVP in Cy Young I think started much earlier. Yeah, the MVPs. The first one was 1931, I think. Uh, I think Jimmy Fox was the first MVP. And Rookie winner. of the Year actually supersedes M- uh, Cy Young. Because Cy Young didn't start till 56. Rookie of the Year was like 47, 48. Right. Jackie Rob- they called the Jackie Robinson Award because the year they started, the Rookie of the Year was the year that Jack and he won the award. And it's, it's named after him now. And you're right. The Cy Young. And the interesting thing about the Cy Young in the 50s and, and, and that you didn't have an award, but you could be the MVP if you like Hal Neuheiser won back-to-back MVPs. Great mm-hmm. trivia question for like the, the, the team that had back-to-back MVPs. No never knows the pitcher um but the Cy Young was one award for both leagues uh from like 56 to 61 before they actually had a Cy Young for each league mm-hmm. um so you know, you know there's there's a, a long list of, of players um that we said don't have an opportunity uh but I think we're going to talk about you know the the easy awards I think this year and there's a few of them that I think that are super easy uh, and, a, and a few I of them actually, that I think are kind of tough I, I think most of the major awards are pretty easy yeah this year. yeah um, I think that mostly yeah re- Really, unless you want to try and be a bit avant-garde with your pick. So let's just get the MVP out of the way. Right, so we'll start with the MVP. Do you want to do AL or NL first? Uh, It doesn't matter because I bet you we have the same ones. Right, so AL. (laughs) Uh, I have Otani. I have Otani. (laughs) Aaron Judge, not this year, right? Didn't didn't have the year. You know, we'll wax poetic about other guys before we talk about the year that Otani had. Corey Seager, definitely. In any other year, this guy would have, like, an amazing year. But first of all, he plays shortstop. Right. And he plays a really good shortstop and we'll hear more from him about him and my thoughts later on right. as far as that is concerned but right he was he was terrific his teammate at second base you know talk about being now sometimes you can get canceled out I don't think that happened in this case because Otani was the MVP no matter what but right. between Seager and Semyon um, you know those two guys are you know are really good and Semyon gets overshadowed twice <laughs> in, in that sense and, and I just think it's interesting because he was so good this year, and the Rangers were such a pleasant surprise. And and it feels almost like you should give it to Seager because his team's in the playoffs. They're playing the Orioles as we speak, literally. You're not allowed. No, 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 no. So but, no, hold on. But what can't I'm saying do is that. they're in the playoffs. Right, right, right. And and, and, and in large part team, because of him. Otani didn't play the last month of the season, which is kind of an argument in his favor, actually. But um, his team wasn't close to the playoffs. Yeah, right. We and could so, finish last without you, as the old saying goes. Well, except for the athletics <laughs> were in there. True, true. It. So uh, they, they had a bit of an advantage there. But, I mean, okay, Otani was unbelievable this year. Right. There was no other candidate. And most valuable player, you know, because he does the two things, mm-hmm. right, that it, it makes it hard for anybody to get in the conversation. And we said this last year, you know, when, when saying, well, we better give it to Judge now because pretty much you can give it to Shohei every year if a guy right. can play like that. But the thing is, is he had like, what, like a 146 ERA plus Yeah, this yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, 46% better than all the other pitchers. And, by the way, he was the best hitter in probably all of baseball. Right, that's the unbelievable part is that he was, one of the best pitchers. He was a Cy Young candidate. Spoilers, he is not my Cy Young. Nor is he mine. But he was, and he was definitely going to be in the conversation for Cy Young had he finished out the year pitching. But he didn't. So that kind of hurts his chances. I th- I think so. Um, he didn't because he played. He missed really the last month and a half of pitching. He yeah, pitching yeah, like right. Mid August. Yes, yes, he did. But he only st- he, he hit into the beginning of September, right. and then and, and then, then he shot it down. But that that like missing a month and a half worth of starts. He was not so much better than everybody else that you could give him both of the awards. Uh, just a quick aside on Otani, you know, thinking about um, him being a free agent and where will he go, and probably not the Angels, I think, is what most of us feel. Um, but, you know, he's going to kind of clog up the DH wherever he goes because that's all he can do. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so but you can't that, have you can't have a right-handed guy uh, or something oh, like that. Yeah, you, you don't you're really want to Tommy yeah. as your DH. I feel like your grasp for, for straws here with that. So, one. if you're a DH on a team and your team is looking at Otani, you should be looking for another job. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's really, your job security is limited. And 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 in the National League is it is it as obvious to you as it was to me? I feel like it was somewhat similar in that you had a, a guy that was the clear winner and then a second guy who was like any other year. I could put 
two guys there. Like, two guys there, but it was really. But they're teammates and they cancel each other out right. in, a, in, in a way. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we might have different MVPs then. Well, I have Acuna. Okay, I have Acuna as well. But the teammates I have that cancel each other are Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts. Well, I was going to say Matt Olson. Yeah, I had him fourth in my in my pick, right, so you right. could have him higher. Well, I think I think to me, Betts is the clear other guy that in any other year could have won MVP. And and as and as much for his versatility, I think as a fielder playing second base, shortstop, and right field, right, which is nuts, having an unbelievable offensive season. And 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 basically, he he was in, in some statistical categories ahead of Acuna for a, a little while, and then Acuna kind of put the pedal to the metal, metal. at the end of the season. Right. And Acuna is the first 40-70 guy. Yeah. Like, how do you not give it to them just on the basis of that? And and you know, I, Acuna as a defender, I would say is neutral. He can make some great plays out there, but he does occasionally yeah, yeah, yeah. struggle with a bit of a like a, a laugher. I I I, I kind of feel that way too. But yeah, I I, I had to give it to him. Um, right there, uh, there, and it's funny because you can look at the Braves going. Well, you know, they've got nine guys in their lineup who are really great hitters. So if they didn't have Acuna, would they still be the division champion? And this uh, much but of a threat in the playoff? They wouldn't be They wouldn't be the World Series contender without. The, no, no. But I'm just saying they have so many good times guys in but your he team. Sets the tone for uh, that team uh, by in, being. In, by in, so many way, does. and he went out with a mission this year. So yeah, he he is he is my MVP. Uh, pretty pretty easy. And let's go. To, I don't think this is as easy. But how about Cy Young? So Cy Young, I think is interesting. So you want to start with the NL this time? Okay. So I know my Cy Young winner on a team that all of the advanced stats said they should have been better than what they were, and just being laughably bad in one run games, and especially extra inning games, and being incredibly unclutch at the plate doomed the San Diego Padres this year, but I think Blake Snell has to be my side. That's, uh, I have I have him too, and I almost got, I, you know, I was leaning to Justin Steele a little bit. Steele um, and the, the Cubs collapse down the stretch kind of hurt his chances, I feel like. He needed to have one or two signature games because he was behind Snell the whole way, but he needed to have that standout performance that either elevated the Cubs or was seen as like his valiant effort in that, and he he just didn't get. That. I, I tend to agree with you there, and and Zach Gallen, as much as he had those two bad starts late in the season, because there was a time where I think we both felt it was his to lose, and then he lost, and it. then he kind of did exactly that. He lost it, although he's he's now in the playoffs. He's so pitching he's well, but it doesn't that. doesn't count now, right? right. Yeah, pitching well in the and, playoffs, and I think with a name that's gotten floated, I just couldn't. I, I don't think he was even third on my ballot. It would be Spencer Strider. Yeah, well, when a guy has two hundred twenty five strikeouts, right, and he won twenty games. I know nobody cares that he won 20 games, but he won 20 games right, for a really like good a, team. He had like a plus three something ERA. Yeah, he had a yeah. very high. 3.4 or right. something like that. Yeah. His whip wasn't nearly as as dominant this year as it's been in past years because his walks were up this year. But but he outperformed everybody in strikeouts by so much. And and that that just kind of like, wow, if I'm a Braves fan, I'm going, you know, well, if, you know, what does he got to do? Well, what he's got to do, Braves fans, is pitch to like a 275 and right. do those things. And then right. he gets the side. I, I think it's going to be really hard for anybody in this day and age to win a Cy Young having a three an over three ERA unless everybody has an over three ERA uh, unless his name is my American League winner and that's Garrett Cole because I don't think he was below three ERA I for the season he was, I don't he was my winner. think so check that out so who did you have in the American League I told you I gave it up I had Cole <laughs> that was my that was the easiest one for me because he was just so like as bad as kind of similar in a way to Blake Snell and the Padres as bad as the Yankees were this year, Garrett Cole was not part of it. He that. was rock solid the whole time, the, the whole season, and, and and gave them the innings that they hoped one other guy in the staff would be able to. Right, he was a workhorse for them. He was dominant in the vast majority of those innings. It felt like he only had like one or two blow-up starts you know, the entire season. And it's, and it's not enough that he's a Yankee, right, as for this Met fan, but he went to UCLA. Oh. You know, so it, it, it's it's hard for me to, to show Garrett Cole as much love as I should, but I'm going to show him the love here. The guy was the class pitcher of the American League, and when you think about the competition, you had Castillo on the Mariners. He had a really good season. Uh, the guy who pitched this weekend here for the Orioles this past weekend, Kyle Bradish, had a very nice season, but not a Cy Young season. I mean, Garrett Cole was eight and zero versus playoff teams this year. Yeah, well, I didn't know that. That's a good one. That, like, I think that's something that really shows that. And then, 
opposing, uh, you know, opposing cleanup hitters hit 167 off them this season. <laughs> One homer. That's the an entire obscure stat. Year. Opposing cleanup. How do they face me? Right, the, the opposing like, cleanup hitters. He, he is dominating <laughs> the best hitters right. in those lineups, and I think he was clearly the Cy Young yeah, in yeah, the American yeah. League. I, I, kinda, I saw some of the um, advanced. I was looking at the projections, and they had relievers. At, uh, Devin Williams, believe it or not, sort of scored Cy Young points higher than any National League pitcher, um, and Bautista. Felix Bautista of the Orioles also so and and no one's talking about giving those guys a Cy Young and it's been it's been a number of years since a relief pitcher had uh, and and I kind of feel like it's you know should be you know not fair you know that that relievers should win Cy Youngs I guess they right. should come up with another award for them now I, and Cole had a two six three ERA this year so right, you were right I, right no. exactly I was like there's no way he was too good the entire season. Now, I think it's funny because we might end up having all the same all the way because who is your American League Rookie of the Year? Well, this is also really easy. It's really <laughs> it's same with the National League. It wasn't Yoshida. Okay, so I'm going to give you the guys I didn't pick. Okay. Okay, so it wasn't Yoshida. I thought he he had a legitimate chance, I, I think, this year. I think Tristan Beebe, uh, Beebe yeah. could have, it was really good for the Guardians this season. Had a nice. Had, had, and Tristan Casas had an. I, I really like that player, by the way. The yeah, yeah. Basically, he's he's given Justin Turner something else to do in Boston because he's going to be playing first base now forever. But it's Gunnar Henderson. Yeah, yeah. And 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 some of these guys, just like Adley Rutschman for them last year, you know, the, the maturity that this young player brings and his presence in the lineup, uh, just like your National League law, or I'm gonna, uh, your National League winner, and we'll talk, we'll still talk about the American League for the same reason is that what they bring to the lineup, um, uh, and 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 in their attitude and well, the way think, they conduct themselves. The other thing that's impressive about Henderson is that he gave them both time at short and third this season, so he was giving them defensive versatility as well, and he was the only qualifying shortstop or player. Sorry, player in the American League who had positive offensive and defensive, defensive war. war. Yeah, yeah. And that was him and Marcus Simeon. So that's pretty good company. That's pretty good company. Yeah, and, yeah. Your, and that shows you he's being elite on both sides of the ball, which as a rookie is just so difficult to do. And and I Anybody still, do. I still have I my it. doubts about these Orioles, but the the presence and their uh, uh, ability gonna, up there for that entire team, these young players don't look like rookies so anymore. Let's put it this way, even players. if they lose this series to the Rangers, that's a team that's going to be a threat in the American League for a long time to come. So, so I guess we could probably spend the next twenty minutes talking about the National League, uh, you know, Rookie of the Year, because there really isn't anybody close. No, I, I think it's pretty obvious. I mean, Spencer Steer had a nice year for mm -hmm. the Reds. Kodai Senga had a nice year, but for you the would Mets. never give him the Rookie of the Year because you got this thing about wanna, not giving would, a Japanese player. I would only want to give him Rookie of the Year if, if there was there nobody was, else. Yeah, and he was far and away better than everybody else. But there's a guy this year that uh was better than him. Before the season, everybody said Corbin Carroll was going to win the Rookie of the Year. And then Corbin Carroll is going he to win the Rookie of the Year. And is the ninth player in Major League history to be a 2050 guy. So that's that puts him in Ricky Henderson te territory. Acuna did he would that. Be, he would be getting like MVP votes if Acuna Freeman... Betts and Matt Olson didn't go off this year. Not to mention uh, the gold glove uh, capacity that he has. We'll see later on if he actually, you know, we, we, one of us thinks that he won a gold glove. Um, so, yeah, Corbin Carroll, uh, you know, at the top of that Arizona lineup, um, the number one reason, I think, why that team has gone as far as they have. I mean, I mean, he is the only player and Zach Allen. in Major League history to put up 50 stolen bases, 25 homers, and 10 triples in a season. He did that at age 22, and he is the only person to ever do that. Well, you have to go down the stat rabbit hole to come up with that one, right? Right. <laughs> but that still that shows that this guy is, is a, like Acuna. He is going to have a 30-60 season. I'm pretty sure in his career. Yeah, I, right. You normally project home, uh, home runs to go up as a player. Right, and his matures, he is not stronger. Gonna, and, and the stolen bases are going to keep being there because it, the, the elite guys are just going to be able to steal bases like mad. Now he could have some kind of wild season where his, ba you know, bases per plate appearance is is nuts because he's hitting triples, he's hitting homers, he's stealing tons of bases. His BCPA, yeah, it's going to be very <laughs> impressive. I've heard that stuff somewhere before. Um, and and do, did we talk about the fact that Corbin Carroll plays center field? Mm -hmm. So at, at a at a, so it's not just that he's a great defensive player, also that he plays center field. So getting that kind of production under center field. And um, I do want to also give out Francisco Alvarez a shout out as you know for rookie of the year. He probably would also get some third place votes, I think, on some ballots. The only reason is is you're not going to 
going to give a rookie of the year to a guy who had 225. Right, but he also like had 26 that. homers. Absolutely. A uh, 25 homers is, is ridiculous for a catcher uh, as a rookie. It doesn't happen very often at all. So, um, all right. Um, I think... You know, the, the one of the toughest ones to we said to to sort of change is gold gloves in terms of oh, we, we the managed, legacy. We're gonna do gold glove or manager. Oh, you want to do manager of the year? That's fine. Let's do manager of the year. Yeah, manager of the year. So, who's your manager of the year in the National League? Um, you know, I, I had a tough one. This was not as easy for me, right? I, 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 and I think my choice is it's uncontroversial and it, it's controversial at the same time. I think. Okay. Well, I. I think mine's probably covered because I almost picked Tori Lavulo uh, of the Diamondbacks. Okay. But I picked Skip Schumacher of the Marlins. Mm -hmm. Getting a rookie manager, right? But I don't know how he did that with that team. Right. That team was amazing <laughs> in close ball games. That team found a way to get it done with a, you know, a team that most people would say is less than the sum of its parts. And he, you know, getting them, even though they were thoroughly dispatched by the Phillies, that was still as a, we expected. They were still that was a very successful season for them. But this is the first place we're going to disagree because disagree, I had Dave Roberts. Yeah, you know, that's a good pick because you know when I think about Dave Roberts, I like, talk about having to do it with mirrors. Right, right. <laughs> that's why is because that team won that division going away with putting it together with uh, pitchers that were, you know, duct taped together, literally. Remember that? Well, and remember the time at the, before, was it spring training where Gavin Lux got the season ending injury and all of a sudden your whole master plan for what you did over there went out the window and you had to go and bring in Miguel Rojas to play short. Uh, that didn't work out too well. No, I mean, you had to go and get a Matt Rosario. I mean, you had Noah Syndergaard stinking it up until they got rid of him for Emma uh, Reserve. What a trade of the year. Un unsung trade of the year. Right. Exactly. <laughs> addition by subtraction and addition by just getting a better player. And you're right about the pitchers. I mean, when we talk about the guys who aren't pitching for the Dodgers. Right, which just, again, speaks to how good Clayton Kershaw is, that he's kind of just stuck around this whole season you know he's not throwing a ton of innings but he's always been there right right and and, and if you put clayton kershaw out there in a playoff game and he's gonna you, give you, you could expect five innings of really five good pitching. or six innings of good pitching from him but you know i think the 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 dodgers are likely to be in the nlcs just because i think they're gonna handle the diamondbacks without much issue right right and, and they're, they're probably like you know what we wouldn't mind watching the phillies and the braves beat each other up in a five game series a little bit I would also give an honorable mention to Dave Martinez of the Nationals because that's a team we really didn't give much of a shot to. And, and they, uh, you they, look at their lineup and him integrating they these new above players. above their level. Yeah, I think so because they don't have very much pitching, but you know mm -hmm. they, they managed to uh, to win a lot of games this year that you wouldn't have expected them to. All right, so let's let's go to the Gold Gloves. Um, and uh, no American League. I think it's kind of obvious though. In the, in the American League, yeah, Brandon Hyde, Oriole manager. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot that. Yeah. Um, yes, I had the same one. That, that one's easy. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting that a guy who has a big-time losing record with the Orioles as a manager, I think I saw it today, he's like 313 and 500. Right, right, but they won 100 games. Because he's been there through all right. the bad times. And now this year they won 100 games unexpectedly and you know won the division. you got to give it With to a them. bunch of young players and, and pulling that all together. Th that's probably the easiest predict to predict a war that's going to go out this I, year. I, 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 I would think Corbin Carroll's easier, actually, yeah. At, at, at for National League MVP. So, well, I guess I keep pushing the gold gloves, so thank yeah, you for, for, for pulling me off that. <laughs> oh, but let's go to the gold gloves. All right, which league? Let's, let's we'll start with the American League. All right, and I'll, I'll give you my guys. I, I don't really necessarily – I, I picked the guys um, and, and that I thought, wow, they had really good D-War, they had good range, so I kind of looked at it from that perspective. I didn't look too much at, second, uh, at the second – a finisher in this. I just kind of picked one guy that I thought was good. What was interesting is that we've called Gold Gloves sort of a legacy award. So if you won the award the year before, it's yours to lose. Right. Uh, I, I think there's certain positions where that's not as common. I think pitcher, it's not quite as common. Yeah, and I don't feel like my picks this year really reflect that. that. So I can we can talk about the guys that no. won it last year. Um, Kirk won it last year uh, in for catcher. Mm -hmm. uh, Nathaniel Lau, Jose Altuve at second, Ramirez at third. Uh, Bogarts for Boston last year at shortstop. Uh, Aaron Judge won a Gold Glove. Julio Rodriguez, Rodriguez for Seattle, uh, and Mike Trout. And of all those guys, I I think I have one that actually repeated, uh, which is or, or two that repeated. Oh yeah, let's go through. The, let's go through it then. So uh, I had uh, Ty France at first base from the Mariners as a uh, as a Gold Glove. He has not won one before. Interesting. So uh, I I think it's not surprising that you don't have a repeat here because Vlad Guerrero. Jr. was a uh, right. not a right. good goal, right. first base. That was a pretty easy one. Right. This was one of the ones that was because 
a bit easier to go with. Um, I actually, I thought, I, I he did not have as much D-War, but I thought Nathaniel Lau. Well, he won Texas, last year. Right. He I, he was just I thought he did not have as much as Ty France did, but I just thought he was better in terms of and that was a very good Texas defense. Very good, and one of the reasons why anyhow we got a, a terrific player like Corey Seager at shortstop, mm-hmm. uh, and he is my shortstop Gold Glove, and actually, which is kind of surprising because a lot of people you know have him behind. Um, who who's the shortstop? Uh, well, not Gunnar Henderson. He wasn't going to win. No, it wasn't Gunnar. Gunnar Henderson was not the other guy that was going to win. Uh, who was the other guy in the American? Who do you have? Um, for shortstop? Yeah. I actually had uh, Seager. You have Seager also. Okay. So, yeah, I just thought he had a terrific season uh, at, at shortstop. Th- that one more, th- th- that's, I, I feel like that pick was a bit of a, almost like a makeup. Like, okay, you didn't get the MVP. I'm going to give you the gold glove and spoilers. But I try to think slugger. of a, who's, a, who's a shortstop that I watch out there that is, you know, gives me even more confidence than, than uh, Seager. And there really isn't anybody uh, in, in the American League that does that. Um, I had former Met and uh, Jimenez. As my second base. Andre Jimenez? Yeah, 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 as my second base. Uh, and, and just, you know, a, a, a real good defensive player, lots of D-War. Um, and again, another position that, I don't know, who were the other guys, right, that Altuve didn't have as good a, a right. defensive Simeon, season? Simeon was Simeon good. Simeon was he, is, he, is he, capable. I think he wouldn't be giving it to three guys from the Texas infield. Um, <laughs> right. You know, you're not, I don't think there was anybody in the American League. Uh, who was the, a, the Rays second baseman this year? Uh, wasn't it uh, Lau, Brandon Lau? Right, right. And he's good, but he's never elite. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I guess, okay, so... And Kevin Biggio is always a bit of a... Yeah, he's, he's, he's not your... And, 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 you know, guys like uh, traditionally uh, LeMay, you used to be a guy you... Right, but he's, he's, he's lost his step. He doesn't right. have that. So I, I, gave it to, uh, I gave it to Jimenez. Um, and I had uh, Matt Chapman at third base for the Blue Jays as my, my goal club. Now, he's won before, and I kind of felt like I was chickening out a little bit by going that, but I really couldn't think of anybody. Ramirez won last year. I don't know that Chapman necessarily had that much of a better year defensively right. than I, Ramirez. I, think, I, I had Ramirez, but I think this is one of the ones where you could kind of just go with either guy and not feel particularly bad about it. Right, right. So how about your outfield? My outfield? Um, so who with center field, I thought this was definitely the hardest one to do. Yeah. yeah I think sometimes when it comes to outfielders, I just, I just give like outfielders cause you know, you could have two center fields. Oh, okay. So did you, did you, what was yours? I, then? I, I, well, I had J rod, uh, again, repeating, mm-hmm. um, I had Steven Kwan. Uh, as a, as a really? goal club for the Guardians. Uh, and one of my favorite players who is a free agent, I think, after this season, and I don't hear anybody here in New York uh, from the Mets fans talking about him, Kyle Tucker. Um, I did, that man's going to get paid. Uh, I had Kyle Tucker. I had Julio Rodriguez. Okay, good. So that's Because us. That, those two, I felt like, were really impressive with me. I also thought I, I wanted to put Robbie Grossman's name in there, because... Nah. But he was just, he just didn't have the J. He just didn't yeah, have the yeah, stats. Yeah, so, so that was your other guy, though? You picked Robbie Grossman? No, so, or, no. so Quan wasn't your other guy, was no, it? No, no, Quan was not my other guy. Um, Who did I pick? Sorry, I have to take a peek here. Okay. Guys that we didn't pick, you know, our guy, I, you know, I thought there, there were guys that had pretty good defensive oh, seasons. Strong. Miles Straw, and he's he's always in the running for Gold right. Glove, so I think he's you know that's a, right because uh, so I, I forgot just because he was also la- he was a winner last year right right so in, in the holdover winners um, catcher in the American League well you know and it's interesting because we said last year you know the catcher was Alejandro Kirk and I I guess I didn't think of Kirk and he's a big guy as being a terrific defensive catcher but you won the Gold Glove so got to be you know got to be better gotta than be at least I, pretty good than I thought so who did you have a catcher in the American League. Uh, I did not have Trevino again. No, no, I would think not. Um, I think he got hurt, didn't play right, very he much. He didn't play very much this year. I had a uh, Heim. Me too. <laughs> okay. He was Jonah Heim. Uh, was, he was a rookie this year. But he, so we don't even have him in our, you know, uh, and to be a gold glove catcher and not even be mentioned in rookie of the we year. Should, we, that's more on us for not yeah, mentioning Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he hit, he hit pretty well, too. Right. I mean, he's certainly not a hole in the lineup and all that stuff. So. But he was a fantastic defensive catcher for them this year. Mm-hmm. And total, you know, surprise coming out of nowhere to just really, and he threw really well, too. So who is your pitcher? Did you, do you even, I mean, this is a hard thing to, to do sometimes. I, I, Tanner Beebe actually was really good defensively this year for the Guardians. So I thought about giving it to him. Uh, 
I gave it to Berrios. Okay, is, is he a really good? I don't even know that you know him, him well enough to know that. I gave it to Garrett Cole uh, because I do really. I I watched him pitch enough to know that you know the guy is very good on the mound and there. Even though he's a big guy, mm-hmm. uh, he he handles himself very well uh, in the field out there. Um, did you put a utility? Because you know they give a Gold Glove I for did utility. Not do a utility. Yeah, I one. tried to. I, I picked Whit Merrifield for that um, because hmm. he he plays all over the place. I don't know that he's a great player everywhere, but he's like. Chris Taylor, or the uh, like kind of versatile in that way that just for the fact that he could be put anywhere like McNeil. Right, right. Like a guy like is like I wish I could use it as like well, Ramon Urias was good this year, he but he really only plays third. Right. So it's like I can't give it to him when he doesn't really play a lot of other positions, enough other positions consistently. So that's why I picked Merrifield. So let's let's go through the National League. Well, in the National League, I know who my utility guy would be. And that is McNeil. Okay, and I didn't pick McNeil, but and I'll, and I'll tell you why because I didn't pick Mookie Betts as a Gold Glove in any position because okay. he played all over the place. So I made him a utility player, <laughs> which is you know kind of not fair because there were enough outfielders that I felt that warranted. And he didn't being play picked. enough games at second to necessarily get right. He played more in the outfield than he did any place. He more at second than he did at short. He played a few games at short, believe it or not. So yeah, I, I've got he some even played like two or three at first. And I wanted to bring in some names that people don't know about as 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 fielders that I think are are, are, right, are really I good. Gave him an outfield one right 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 so um okay first base um i had christian walker i did as well okay i think people don't realize how good a defensive first baseman he is and i for some reason i thought he was a former catcher but that's not the case he's always been a first baseman Mm -hmm. and you know guys like goldschmidt normally are in there Uh, i don't think freddie freeman ever vies for a gold glove matt Matt olsen was good but not that good and and pete alonso you know he's made himself into a serviceable first baseman but he's not a gold glove candidate so so who's your second baseman because one of the normal guys i think like ozzy albies was a little too injured i agree with that give it to him I, I, i give it to nico horner of the cubs really yeah yeah he had a really good season defensively and that's a pretty nice infield there a keystone combination between dansby swanson who i did not give the gold glove at short no i didn't give it to dansby swanson <laughs> and nico either. horner uh so who did you have i had actually i was annoyed because you picked my guy <laughs> <laughs> i was like really because i was like oh I'm like, no he's, he's never, never gonna know nico horner <laughs> right, <no. laughs> yes i do um and shortstop uh so this who, was a tight race this year right because i had two names down and yeah. i told you the one i didn't pick i had lindor i had kim you had you had Kim. Yeah, yeah, and 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 it was really hard for me not to pick Lindor because Lindor just had a great season, man. Right, and, right. And Lindor will be getting in a, a yeah. I'm picking him later on. Okay, and you can you can we kind of tipping our hand as to where we're going with that. Um, so yeah, I had I had Ha Song Kim who uh, who's he dating right now? They, they, he, he's dating like a, a, a oh, wow. big time actress or something like that. I had no like, idea. Like like not I don't remember who it is. So, so thir- I don't see. unlike his first base partner. Arenado does get the gold glove at third this year. I didn't give it to him. You didn't. I wow. didn't give it to Arenado. I gave it to the Rockies, Ryan McMahon. Ooh, okay. Is he, that, really fine that's defensive gotta, player. That's got to feel good for the Rockies in a way that, like, okay, we lost Arenado, but at least we have a gold glove defensive third. I didn't. Right I should have thought about it that way. You're 100 percent right. Um, just had a really excellent season, and and if you remember, Arenado got off to a rough start uh, at defensively this year, and then turned it around, of course. So you kind of bailed me out by by giving me the outfield and not having a position because I was feeling guilty about this because my gold gloves for the NL were bets. Okay. Nimmo. Ooh. I, I thought Nimmo was fantastic this season. I, I think he, d- he did not get the credit for being as good a defensive. I'm going to pick another guy there that you're not even thinking of who also was a teammate of Ryan McMahon's. Oh. His name is Brenton Doyle. Brendan Doyle. Brenton, B-R-E-N-T-O-M, Brenton, Brenton Doyle. I have seen this guy play one time, so only because I read about him, I said, well, let me follow this guy. And defensively, apparently, you know, the numbers support this guy like being like the best by a fair margin in center field. So uh, I'm a player that not that many people know about because he plays in a market we don't really get to see, you know, mm-hmm. play very much for a lousy team. Uh, and I had Ian Happ as my other, which, you know, that's not a that's not a going surprise. out on a limb. Right, this guy's yeah. been a candidate. He won last year. He he was really good again this year because he was my third. And but I was like, oh, I kind of like a bunch of the same guys in the same position. I, I had another guy. So I had I had Doyle, as I said, Ian Brenton Happ. Doyle, Happ, and I had 
Fernando Tatis Jr. Really? As, as a gold glove right fielder. Wow. Yep, yep. The guy was ridiculous out there this year. It, it was a little, but can we transition to this guy from shortstop to the outfield? Yes. yes. And did you think it was going to be right field? No. And does it look like it's the right place? Yes. I mean, this guy is terrific out there. Had a very high D war and has a cannon, as you know, out there in right field. Um, how about your uh, catcher? Catcher this year in the, the National, National League. League. Real Muto. Yeah, me too. He's, and, the, he's just the best catcher. And, and, and Sean League. Murphy had a really good year catching, but he's not the defensive guy right. that, that Real Muto. I don't even think Real Muto had as good a defensive as year, as, year. As, as he did last year. But, uh, but th- think, that one was his to lose, okay. in my well, opinion. I also think that catchers, just, they're, they're going to look worse than they did last year because guys can just steal so much more easily this season. Well, that's a really good point. And now they're dealing with the whole pitch comp thing. Right. So it's, 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 a, you know, it's a different game. It's a, it's a different game. Your pitcher? My pitcher? In the National League. I actually didn't pick. Yeah, I, I picked Luzardo because uh, you know he's cat-like quickness and lefty on the mound, um, and and and, and just, a lot of people I feel he's right. Just felt like it feels so like so like. Eh. And 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 you said your utility player was McNeil, McNeil and mine was Betts. So all right, so we're down to the final awards here, and that's the, the Silver Sil- Slugger. Um, and like you said, since 1980, the Silver Slugger has been around. So uh, you know, it basically is voted on. Uh, by major league managers and coaches who are unable to nominate somebody that's on their own team. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so I really like that. And, and this is sort of like a peer, well, not a peer award, but, you know, the people that watch you play that actually are supposed to know something about baseball. <laughs> so um, I, I, I don't know if you picked these. You can tell me if, I don't know if you did or you didn't. I'll, I'll I did, t- but you, you mean what, uh, American League catcher, who do you have? American League catcher, I had uh, Rutschman. Rutschman, he's kind of the obvious pick. I feel like just well, because, you could have Jonah Heim, I guess. I, I think, but Rutschman had a better offensive season. I, I, I think so. Yeah. And I think like, it, it, Silver Slugger is kind of like who do you think had the best offensive season at that position? Right. It's sort of like fantasy, some fantasy leagues, right? right? Where you ignore the defense and just think, what does the guy purely as an right, offensive right. player so do? Like, at first base, you're going to have a different pick here this year because last year it was clearly Vlad Guerrero Jr. And this year, I don't think it is. No, I think you could talk about Tristan Casas. Yeah, late, and he made a late run at that. He made a late run at that, but I don't. I think it's for me. It was actually Daniel Lau. I had Yandy Diaz actually. actually uh, he led the league in hitting. You're, you're, uh, that's yeah. He just didn't have the home run. Numbers. No, no. But at that position, out of nowhere, right? I mean, who even heard of this guy right. before this year? I uh, actually prefer that to my my Lau pick. Yeah, yeah, and I think he played enough games at first base, especially because I have. Three Rangers, <laughs> Simeon it's, and Seager. I have Simeon and Seager, just like you do. Okay, mm-hmm. at, at second base and shortstop. So you're right. Um, who's your third baseman? Ramirez. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, this is boring. It's, 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 <laughs> how do you pick anybody other than Jose Ramirez, though? Yeah, 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 yeah I agree. Uh, and and there's really nobody else in the American League that you can look and go, well, he was clearly better. Right. You know, it just it just doesn't exist that way. Um, how about your um, outfield? Outfield. I thought about picking Yoshida. Mm, that'd be a good pick. I, I I liked him because I just feel like he should get some credit for being as good as he was this year. And I feel like because Boston wasn't great this year, it kind of overshadowed how good he was. And so he was one of the guys. I think Julio Rodriguez. So uh, I, I, they're going to want us to be our agent, right? Because we have Gold Glove and winning the Silver Slugger. And I have the same thing. Um, well, tell me, tell me who else you have. Uh, I I've gotten two. You can give me one. I had Tucker. So who also have a gold glove and a silver slugger. So these guys are going to want us to represent them. We're so so high in them. So who's your other guy? I thought about picking Trout, but he just didn't have the uh, season. Yeah. yeah, I didn't pick him either. I, I, I This is where it gets tough because you have like the DH, right? And I kept wanting to find a way to fit Jordan Alvarez. I did. I did. Right. Somewhere other. I did. And, and you're right because I think he, he – Played like forty games in the outfield and a hundred right. games at DH. Right, so it's like I, I wanted to pick, and so it's like he was my third one, but I don't know if he qualifies. And it'd be hard to like this. You know, does does uh, Alvarez have to lose to Otani yet again? Right, because <laughs> Otani is so clearly the DH every year. Going, man, I'd be really good if it wasn't for this right. Otani guy. <laughs> so I gave it to your Don Alvarez, and maybe that should be a little asterisk there because I don't right. know if they'll pick him that way. But I, I, I have a funny feeling that the guys that vote on this probably think in that same vein, going, well, it doesn't matter. They didn't play the whole time out. Out there you can't not have alvarez there right um okay how about your national league guys catcher i really wanted to give this to alvarez but i had to give it to Riomuto. 
I gave it to Murphy. You gave it to Murphy. I gave okay. it to Murphy. You know, hitting what, like twenty home runs for Atlanta. Rio Muto hit about the same, right? He I don't was, think Rio Muto hits that like many home teens. runs, but he hit in the teens for sure. Um, I just, I just thought Murphy was at, at a at a few really important times of the season was their offensive player besides Olsen, who was producing on a consistent basis. And Olsen is my first baseman. And Olsen is not my first baseman. Who's your first baseman? My first baseman is a guy named Freddie Freeman. Wow. You know, now, now, and I guess I'm not showing Matt Olson a lot of love. All the guy did was hit 54 homers, win the RBI title by 19 in the National League. You, you, thank you for making my argument. Yeah, right, right. But Freddie Freeman, you know, he did, did his Freddie Freeman thing where, you know, you're looking at him in April and May, go, he's, he's good. Maybe he's, you know, losing a little bit. And the end, they're going, my God, this guy must had 60 doubles. He had 20 stolen bases. He hit almost 30 home runs. That was a good year. He hit 30, 320 or something like that. Come on. Freddie Freeman is uh, he's a Hall of Fame player. I'll, I'll say it right now. I, I, I think I think they have two on their on their right. current roster. And this is where it's like, okay, well, the way you could cheat this year is you put bets in it second. Yeah, you could do that. You could do that. I did not. Who was your second baseman? Then? I, I I put Al, Ozzie Albies as my second baseman because I think he played enough to qualify for the hitting aspect, and he hit 33 homers. Right, that was kind of why I base. had him, too. Is just like, well, the, the guy had 30 homers as a second baseman. Yeah. Nobody else was close. Yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, so we both had Albies. Yeah, short. Who, who's your shortstop? Hmm, I wonder. <laughs> yeah, this one, this one is much easier than the gold glove. It's Lindor. It is with great pleasure yeah. <laughs> that we award the silver slugger to Francisco Lindor. Door. Yes. No hesitation. On yeah, that yeah, one. yeah. And and so, how can a guy be an underrated three hundred and forty million dollars shortstop? Because you put up. Because you play in New York, right? <laughs> and people give you a hard time unless you do everything fantastic all the time. Now the Atlanta Braves take my corners here because I have Matt, I have Austin Riley as me too, me too. That player just bugs the crap out right. of me because he's just so darn good and he kills us and and it's like. Him too? You gotta have another guy like this? I mean, it was enough for Chipper Jones, and then this guy comes next. Mm. Like, it was like, oh man, it just kills me. So, all right, we're gonna go to the outfield. I had Corbin Carroll as one of mine. Me too. I, he deserves it. Me too. The me guy, too. Hit, he hit 300, mm -hmm. 25 homers. St the first, uh, the, the ninth, 2050 guy, like I said right. before, which is elite company. When you, I didn't was surprised at the, at those guys. Like these are names you know, all those guys. Um, Let's see. Who else could it be? Hmm. Um, who did you have? Um, well, we all know. We both had Acuna, I would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shocker on there. But who's the other guy? So this is where it's interesting because I think Ian Happ was a guy I thought about because he had a pretty good offensive. I thought he had a very good offensive season, but not quite good enough to get there for me. I thought you could look at a guy like Soto. Yay! Me! That's you who like, I picked. You like Soto? Yeah. Because Tatis didn't quite have the offensive year that he had the defensive year. Yeah, yeah, and he had a good offensive year. Did you really look at Soto's year? Right, I think he, it was way better than you think. Right, I think I think his were, ops plus was like one fifty right, or something just, like he, that. He just hit weirdly for a low yeah, average, yeah. but he's never been a that. I don't think he's always been a super high average guy. He's a super high on base guy because he walks like a madman. Yeah, yeah, and you know he would look really good you in know, orange and blue. I, I <laughs> just, to, I'm just saying. I tend to agree with you. <laughs> so if if I were Steve Cohen and I'm the Mets and thinking, what's the one thing we can do? You know, you can break the bank and bring in Otani, but this Juan Soto is a, an amazing ball player, and he he looks a little and he would fit really well. In right yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's he would fit well here because he's got a lot of guys that open their mouth in New York, and he doesn't seem to be a guy who wants to open his mouth. He wants to speak with his bat. That's fine That's, with that's fine with me. And he, who who was your DH in the National League. DA. This one I thought was like, I was like, well, can I make Freddie Freeman my DH? Yeah, yeah. That's a good point, actually, but he didn't DH, so no. no. <laughs> uh, Harper. Oh, uh, well, and, and even when he didn't start playing until mid-May? Yeah, because I couldn't really... You're going to hate who I pick, then. Who do you pick? Who, who, would, who would you hate that I pick? Because you hate to pick this guy for anything because don't really like the guy that much. Marcel Ozuna. Oh. <laughs> I just can't give it to him on principle. Did you see the year he had? He, was really, he had 40 home runs. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, you know, oh, yeah, he's just another guy on that brave team. But I felt like I needed to call out, like, at least two guys from that Philly lineup. Yeah, I, I don't disagree, and, and, and the Philly lineup will give the Braves fits. Right, in the, exactly, <laughs> and I had Rio Muto. And I, so it was just like, I'm like, okay, at least I have two guys from both the Phillies and the Braves. I had three guys from the Braves. Yeah, yeah, and, and right, we Four, could pick a bunch of Rangers to hit right. and all that stuff. Like, but that's how it goes some years. 
You could pick nine Braves. It kind of makes sense <laughs> if you're going to have a lot of Braves. They're the greatest offense that's ever by bases created. By bases created per plate appearance, as we said, they are the greatest team in Major League history. So uh, yeah, They yeah. should have a few silver sluggers. They definitely should. But anyway, those are our awards. We'll see how right we are or yeah, how. If, if you have any you know, disagreements, you have anybody that think we missed or should we definitely shouldn't have picked, let us know. Who we crazy to pick yeah. and all that. So uh, anyway, thanks for uh, keep writing to us because we're getting some great uh, suggestions from you guys too. Thanks.